Hi there, I'm Andy Malone. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. For years, many of our businesses have been focused on keeping bad guys outside the company. You typically do this with traditional technologies like firewalls, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems. But what if the bad guy is already inside your company? This can often prove to be a little bit more difficult. Well, that is until now. Microsoft 365 has just released something called Insider Risk Management, which becomes part of its Microsoft Compliance Toolkit. But what is it and how does it work? Well, let's take a look and find out what it can do for you. So we're going to start our session in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on to Compliance. So here in the Compliance Admin Center, I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom I'm going to choose show all and in the show all section here, you can see we have this insider risk management portal. So um, just to give you a quick look at how the portal is set up, you can see that we have a number of sheet tabs, overview, alerts, cases, policies, users, and notice templates. Now, just before we start, um, obviously an alert, uh, you want to be alerted if something happens, but you can see I can't create an alert here. Um, in the cases area, I can't create a case. Hmm. So how does this work? Well, the idea here is that you create a policy, and if that policy gets a hit from one of the rules that you've set up, it will generate an alert, which in turn creates a case from which you can then investigate. So before we actually go ahead and create our policy, we should just take a quick look at the insider risk settings here, because uh, there's some important settings. So in terms of privacy, um, if you're pulling off reports, uh, again, some people are a little nervous about seeing information like this, so you can anonymize the users or you can decide to say, don't show anonymized persons, just their full name. So I'm gonna go ahead and set on that. Now, policy indicators, this is what do you want to monitor for? Now, remember we're monitoring for um, potential disgruntled employees or rogue employees. So things like employees who are sharing files with users outside the organization, SharePoint sites, downloading uh, inappropriate content. Um, um, if you're using things like EMS or enterprise mobility and security, then these will light up at the moment. I'm not using those. Um, you've also got things like uh, risk score boosters as well. And this monitors things like if the user is doing things which they don't normally do. So that uh, uses a little bit of artificial intelligence. So that's quite useful. Um, in terms of policy timeframes, uh, again, these affect the user uh, if they trigger a match. So, for example, um, an activation between this can be one to 30 days. Determine how long policies will actively detect activity for users um, uh, and trigger when a user performs the first activity matching the policy. And you can see that this is set for 30 days. Now, this is 30 days from the first incident, and you can also look at past uh, detections as well. So you've got some historical content there too. Now, in terms of intelligent detections, um, as I said, one of the cool things is you can also look for potential anomalies. So anomalies, things like um, uh, certain file types, um, accessing... Uh, for, you know, large volumes of files. Um, it can be integrated into um, Azure ATP, or as it's now known, Defender ATP. Um, and you can include and exclude certain domains that the user might be looking at as well. Um, now, one of the cool things is you can also export the alerts. So if you're using Microsoft SEM system, uh, or a, a third-party SIM system. SIM, of course, is Security Event and Incident Management. So you can it will uh, integrate into that as well. Um, you can also set up your priority user groups here. So if a user is a member of a sensitive group, 
such as research and development or a, a finance or management or something like that, you may want to set up that uh, as a priority group. Um, you can also set up a uh, priority physical assets as well. So if you're managing devices in 365 using Endpoint Manager, you can also indicate if there's any priority physical machines, for example. One of the really cool things about Microsoft 365, of course, is that we have Power Automate. And this option here shows that there are a few uh, templates already pre-created, such as notifying a manager. So if a policy hits, it will send out an automated email to a manager. That's a really nice feature, by the way. Um, of course, it also uh, integrates with Microsoft Teams as well. This is currently in preview. And you can see I've gone ahead and I've switched that on. So now that I've set those settings up, I'm going to go into Insider Risk Management and I'm going to click onto Policies. Um, and I suppose we should go ahead and create a policy. So um, I'm going to create a policy and I'm going to call this my R&D Levers Policy. Okay. And you can put in a little description here. And of course, what are you looking for? Well, any members of that group, of course, R&D, research and development, is potentially sensitive. So I'm looking for things like potential data leaks, uh, d potential data theft. So if there's any data theft uh, by departing users, um, any if you suspect that you've got a disgruntled employee, it will look for things like that. Um, again, data leaks by priority users. You'll remember the priority group that I just set up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose data theft by departing user as well. And if I just uh, scroll that uh, down here, you can see you've got other options here as well. So again, if you're integrating with the uh, ATP Defender, you get these other options here too, which is really nice. So I'm going to click on next and now it says, okay, um, for which users or groups do you want this policy to be for? So um, is it all groups or do you want to choose a particular group? So in this case, I'm going to use the Oslo group as an example. So I'm going to just um, click on Oslo. So if I do a search for Oslo, and as I mentioned, I've got this group here called Research and Development. So you can see R&D. And I'm concerned that anybody who's maybe leaving that group or is given notice um, could potentially become disgruntled. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set that. Now, in the next option here, you can specify what you want to prioritize. So if there's any particular content, and again, you can choose a SharePoint site, sensitive types of data, or sensitivity labels that you've set up. So I'm going to choose a SharePoint site, uh, and again, I'm going to scroll right down, and I can say, Right, what exactly do I want to monitor here? So I've got Oslo sales product and I've got training uh, and I've got film production. So let's say the R&D team were, were uh, using uh, one of these. So I'm going to say it's the, um, let's say Oslo sales. I, I want to monitor this website as well. Um, I can also choose sensitivity labels. So if you're using um, information protection, uh, data loss prevention policies, and you want to monitor things things like credit card uh, numbers, um, personal identity information. Again, you can set that up here as well. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to click on next here. And what we see now are those policy indicators that I set up. And I, you can see I'm just using the default one here. So I'm essentially, I'm just selecting all those same uh, settings that I created earlier. So I'm going to click next. Again, the policy timeframes. You can either choose the default ones that you set up, or I can go ahead and I can customize those. Again, for the purpose of this demo, I'm quite happy and clicking next. Finally, I get a review. So this is going to be for everybody in the Oslo Research and Development team. And I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to submit that. Okay, so now 
click on done this is now monitoring so if if there are any hits against this particular policy it will go ahead and it will generate an alert and I can filter those alerts out and you know are there any high medium or low issues from an alert it will generate a case and I can now investigate that case and I can export the content I can do a full uh, investigation and gather evidence potentially now the users tab here one of the things that we have here is if you want to monitor a particular user so uh, users appear here if there's been a hit so if they trigger an event like a, a data loss prevention policy or something like that you can monitor that particular user here okay now the other thing uh, you might want to actually how are you going to uh, not just monitor the user but notify the user as well so we have the capability here to create a template so you can create the template in fact I created one earlier um, in fact, no I didn't sorry um, you can create a template you can choose who it's sent from so from an admin and you can send it to a, a group of important users in the organization um, you can put a subject and a message so for example this might be notifying a manager that there's been a hit against one of those policies so that's a really useful uh, feature so there you have it an important part of Microsoft's compliance and security toolkit insider risk management fantastic tool as always remember if you've enjoyed this session go ahead and ring that bell and subscribe and you won't miss a thing until next time I'm Andy Malone and you stay safe take care